Well, hello, friends. Welcome once again. This is Syracuse Sports presented by Krause Health, the exclusive healthcare partner for Syracuse Athletics. Brent Axe, Emily Liker here as Syracuse football spring practice continues. Their first inter squad scrimmage of two coming on Saturday. They've been building towards that. The spring game is April 20th. We're getting closer to that, and we've been going to practice and focusing on different positions here and there, hearing from new voices, hearing from old voices, getting to know new coaches. You're going to hear from a name today you've heard from before. He was the interim coach last year after Dino Babers was fired and is remaining on the staff as the quarterback's coach, Nunzio Campanelli. We're going to hear from him coming up a little bit later on here. And, you know, Emily, the sport comes down to the quarterback position, so we might as well uh, shine the spotlight on that a little bit here. And it's clear who the quarterback of this team is. It's fascinating that Kyle McCord comes in as a transfer, has handed the job, has the keys. The ever-important backup quarterback battle goes on behind him, and as I've told you a million times, and I'll tell you a million more, the court, the backup quarterback plays at Syracuse. One way or the other, it's just worked out that way over the last decade or so. And I think that position battle is interesting in and of itself. We focus so much on McCord, and for good reason, and – what he's going to bring to the table, the the style of play he has, his role in the offense. Let's look at the backups a little bit. Let's go in reverse order a little bit here because Carlos Del Rio Wilson is back on this team. I have to admit, I didn't think he would be, but there he is, Emily. And to his credit, he's usually one of the first guys out there. And he is now locked in this battle with Braden Davis to see who the backup quarterback is going to be. So when you look at QB2, knowing there's a couple more to come in the fall, but the ones that are there now, what stands out to you about looking behind McCord and, and what is there if they have to be called into action? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, Carlos is the guy who's who's has a little bit of a leg up just from the fact that he's been here for two seasons. He has seen like a, a decent chunk of playing time because of all the injuries that Garrett Schrader battled through during his time here. Um, but then obviously last season, Carlos also battled his own injury. He suffered an injury at the end of that Boston College game, um, some sort of leg injury. I'm pretty sure he had surgery in the offseason. We haven't had a chance yet to talk with him and confirm that. Um, but it's interesting because he because he has that leg up, but it, it also doesn't really feel like there's a leg up for him. Right. Like it does yeah. kind of feel like it's a very even competition. Um, and so like one of the things that stood out, we talked to Nunzio Campanelli today, like you said, and asked him about the backup QBs and, and maybe how Kyle is teaching them and what he's seeing from them. And he said, like, the big thing is just getting these guys like pseudo game reps by having like Kyle talk them through like what's going on on the field and how that might be simulated in a game and stuff like that. Because I think that's really the big thing is that like, it might come down to just who's played more time in a game. And that's Carlos for now. Like, Obviously, there'll be games early in the season where maybe they do try to give it to Brayden and and let him throw it a little bit and let him get those reps. But um, yeah, it, it feels like a pretty even playing ground right now. Um, we haven't really seen anything to super indicate they're leaning one way or the other on yeah. on Carlos versus Brayden. Um, so yeah, I, it's it's very even right now. I think the spring game the spring game will be really interesting. But then I think back to last year's spring game, which Carlos also was kind of a star in, and and we had felt like he was making strides in practice and looking good in practice, and then it got to the spring game, and it everyone on Twitter was like, I thought you guys said he was looking good in practice, and we were like, he was. Um, and so, I again, I don't know if it's just a maturity thing, and maybe with another year under his belt, that's going to look different, but... Um, I'll say it again. Spring game should be telling. Hopefully it will be more telling than last year. Well, that's it. You have that example. I, one of the most telling spring game moments in recent memory for backup quarterbacks was Justin Lampson, who ends up transferring mm -hmm. to Stanford. He looked amazing in the spring game, and it really made you say, okay, look at the, this competition. Look at this room that's there now. And what's fascinating about this room, Emily, from top to bottom, 
is they're all transfers. They all started somewhere else. Kyle McCord at Ohio State, Braden Davis at South Carolina, and Carlos has been around for a couple of years. Remember, had a year at Florida before he came here. I have heard that maturity is, is something that he's got to work on. And look, Carlos is an interesting personality. When we've talked to him, he's fun. I think he's somebody that kind of light, you know lightens up the room a little bit. He's been around for a couple of years, but there's so many new faces on this team that the fact that he's the most veteran presence almost doesn't matter, right? It's it's coming in and who establishes themselves with the new faces. And we're going to play the clips from Nunzio Campanelli in a moment here, but to hear you say that and hear Coach Campanelli say that, that he's teaching the guys in the room what to do because right. he's more familiar with the offense. He's more familiar with Coach Campanelli. He's more familiar with Jeff Nixon. And of course, Fran Brown has history with him as well. When you make a change, snap a finger, and everything that is evident in college sports today with the transfer portal, the new guys in command from day one, it, it's fascinating how that can flip itself on its head there, and McCord comes in as, as the number one guy from the get-go here. But looking at Carlos and, and Braden Davis and how they fit in, like, we only see drills, right? We haven't seen much teamwork the teamwork we did see Braden Davis struggled in, and that was kind of a odd circumstance, second team versus first team kind of thing. The spring game, I think, will tell us more as, as we build up to it here. But I'm just fascinated by that, that you look at it in a QB room where last year, Emily, we saw the extreme example. We saw what can happen when your starter goes down, when your backup goes down. They don't trust at that time Braden Davis enough to be a true quarterback and go in there and throw the football and they had to jerry-rig this thing together with Dan Valari and LaQuinn right. Allen and that offense we saw at the end of the year, which barely got him over the finish line here. So everything we've seen from McCord, just from a practice scenario, but everything we've heard, too, is he looks the part, he is the part, he speaks the part, there's a command. Like, he just looks like a starting Division One quarterback here in the traditional sense, and, and that's what you're going to get from Kyle McCord, just pure pro style quarterback. Right. Well, and I had talked about this on, on Tuesday's podcast about how in, in this transfer portal era, like you increasingly just find that like starting QBs everywhere are just transfers from other schools. They're not guys who have grown up in these programs and, and gone through, uh, which is such an interesting dynamic and, and kind of dichotomy. And Nunzio actually touched on that a little bit. Um, our colleague, Chris Carlson, asked him just about like, you know, like being the QB, you come in and you're expected to be a leader right away. You're expected to just kind of have this presence among a team um, that already has well-established leaders and guys it looks up to. And especially on this team with the offense, like three of your biggest leaders all returned this season in Dan Valari, LaQuinn Allen, and Aronde Gadsden. So Kyle's having to come in and kind of figure out um, – how to step up and be that number one leader while respecting those guys and all of that. And by all means, it, it seems to have gone well. And Valari said some very funny things about Kyle today that I thought were entertaining, but Campanelli said, you know, uh, I just had the quote. I, I do think it's a little bit the nature of the way college football is going. Unfortunately, guys have to do that more and more in terms of like coming in and just having to lead a room where there are already guys around and, and just kind of feeling out this, this, weirdness of being a transfer but expected to be acting like you're a veteran because you are but you're not a veteran in this program chris uh asked a good question of coach campanelli which we'll hear coming up here about look pff numbers aren't everything but they can give you an indication of something and mccord is a quarterback when you look at the numbers in the pocket versus pressure we are in an era where so many quarterbacks are noted for their ability to scramble and throw on the run, scramble to get out of trouble, right? Mm -hmm. McCord's not one of those guys. He can scramble and avoid a sack, but he's not even what you saw last year in Garrett Schrader. His legs were a weapon. It extends plays in a, in a sport where a half a second can matter in the time you have to throw the football. And, you know, we've talked about the offensive line. We'll focus on the offensive line as we go here timing and all these things that have to come together in a sport that has no preseason that is all training camp it's all practice reps and coach Campanelli was saying that today about how you do the best you can to replicate game situations and they'll have a scrimmage Saturday and 
we're not going to be there. The media is not allowed into the scrimmages, but you know, certainly some things will come out of that. We'll talk to people that will there. We'll get the best sense we can of how Kyle looks in the first game situation he's going to be in at Syracuse. But this guy's been around the block a few times. He's played in the Big Ten. He's played in the biggest rivalry in college football, and it's just timing. You've got a receiver like Jackson Meeks who's been a leader and has stepped up, and he's talked about how much work they've done. I mean, I, I expected this, and I'm sure you did too, Emily, but everything everybody has said about Kyle McCord that we have talked to, coaches, players, everybody in between, raves about, and there's a word I keep coming back to, his professionalism, right? How mm-hmm. professional he is, how polished he is, and he just – has command of things, even though he's been around for five minutes. Right. Well, I mean, and and Campanelli hearkened all of this back to like his education and he went to a prep school in, in Philadelphia. Like he, he has been playing this role like his entire life. Like he's a little league guy. Some of these guys on this team played little league with him and have known him since those days, which impacts that, that leadership and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, he just seems to be, a guy who just like understands very innately, like what is required of him in a quarterback role, um, not just on the field and in that sense of the leadership, but the off the field stuff too, bonding with teammates, going out and doing things. We obviously, obviously in the world of NIL, he's getting paid to do some of this, but like Uh he's gone out and he's gone out in the community. He does events at Myers Creek and stuff like that. Like he understands what being a power five, quarterback is and and seems to very much embrace that by the way kyle been at trivia night at all no i have not seen no? kyle or you haven't seen him trivia. There? Not shout yet. out trivia not night yet. you can find uh, <laughs> emily's team there wednesday nights uh kicking ass at the trivia if you ever want to go and and challenge that squad i've done that a few times myself and uh we'll be back soon to, to be doing that Emily, uh, you mentioned Coach Campanelli and uh, Dan Valari talked to the media today amongst those that were available. So let's listen into a few things that they had to say. Before we do that, though, let me remind you to become a Syracuse Sports Insider. And being a Syracuse Sports Insider gives you direct access to me. What do you want Emily and I to look for at practice? Just text me. Tell me what you want us to see. Your thoughts, your opinions, your questions featured on this podcast. We're going to have a podcast coming up here during spring ball that's going to be all your questions about spring football and ask ax brent and ax emily anything podcast if you will about syracuse football everything going on with syracuse basketball uncle brent had a little scoopage this week about eddie lampkin visiting syracuse our syracuse sports insiders heard that first right my opinions any breaking news i have any insight you guys get it first it is so easy to sign up just text the word orange to 315 847 3895 Two weeks free and just three ninety nine a month after that. So let's hear from Coach Campanelli here. Asked about Kyle McCord, of course, and uh, the influence he's had on this team so far. Let's listen. Uh, well, I mean, he's got a lot of strengths, but uh, he's a really accurate passer. He's really smart. Uh, he's doing a great job of understanding the scheme. Uh, I think, you know, the biggest thing is it is a brand new offense to him. So, you know, learning it, learning uh, chemistry with the players. But I've been super impressed with his leadership, uh, his work ethic, his preparation. I mean, you know, he carries himself like a pro every day. And, uh, you know, I think he's a great example to the guys in the room and, and the guys on the team. He's got a bit of a backup QB competition going on behind him behind with yeah. Braden and Carlos. How have you seen him kind of teach them and lead them, and how have you seen them growing? Well, you know, really the big thing is just going through the process for every play. Like, how are we going to go about making sure that we understand it? So we try to communicate together all the time, and, you know, I, it's very easy to ask him, like, hey, what would you see or how do you see this? Because he's, you know, he's played a lot of football and he's got a great understanding, and I think that helps them you know, for him to be able to take that game experience and apply it. You know, a lot of times the the concepts are similar, the terminology and verbiage is different. So he has an understanding of a lot of the things we're doing, and he can pass that on to those guys. If you are in the transfer portal, you're looking for a new opportunity, but going somewhere where you're familiar with people is going to help. Maybe you were recruited by them before. Maybe you know them. McCord knows Nunzio, Jersey guys, right? He knows Coach Fran. He knows Coach Nixon, as we were talking about here. So that will accelerate the process here when, yes, you're somewhere new and there's a lot of football stuff that has to come together. But when you're in sync already and it sounds like that with the coaching staff, as Coach Campanelli was saying there, Emily, I mean, you're you're two steps ahead of the game. Right. And I, I do want to point out, as I was listening back to that, it, it, I remembered 
to illustrate just how how young kind of this this QB room is, at least the QBs behind Kyle. Like we're talking about Kyle having all this game experience and stuff. He has played 24 games in three seasons. Like he was only a starter at Ohio State for one year. Uh, he played all 12, or he played 12 of the 13 games last year. They went to a bowl, obviously. Seven in the 2022 season and five in the 2021 season, and like that's it. Like he was, of course, backing up C.J. Stroud, who is now killing it with the Texans, and so that's a very um, special and unique learning situation that he got to go through. But like, only 24 games of experience, yeah. and we're like, yeah, this guy has so much game experience. Like, but that's just again the nature of what being a college football quarterback is right now. Is it's oh, you got one year under your belt here. Okay, now you can go get another two years at this different program, whatever it may be. And really a credit to him. Like, he looks that polished having only right. played 24 games. Yes, C.J. Stroud, who now has Stephon Diggs as one of his wide receivers. But let's sorry, let's, Brent. Just, let's just not talk about that right now. I'm not ready. <laughs> not ready. Here's more from a Coach Campanelli. Really, the way he conducted himself in the weight room was just such a great example of what it takes to work. You know, he's got a championship work ethic uh, and he's very team oriented. So I, I think he understands the influence that he can have on the team. You know, that's just kind of the way he was raised, played in a great high school program. Like he under, he's understood those things his whole life. So uh, that transition, he's comfortable being uncomfortable, saying tough things to his teammates. You know, I always tell the guys like people that love you tell you the truth. Right. So if you really care about your teammates, you're willing to push them and you know demand the most of them. He does a great job of that. I think we've heard a little bit more of that, Emily, not that the previous coaching staff wasn't honest about what they see, but I just feel like there's been a little bit more of that. There's been a little bit more of either Fran Brown, now to hear Nunzio say that, other people like, man, this place is just everybody's walking around telling it like it is and being honest here. So, And that's coming from a perspective, and Dan Villara kind of says the same thing coming up, and other players have said that. So that's that's interesting that those guards are down and everybody kind of has the same feeling of we're going to tell you how it is out here. And football can be very emotional. And <laughs> we, we saw it with one of the fights that happened at practice earlier. And, and Valari brings up about the pace that practice goes at. Like you don't even have time to hold grudges and be mad at people. Even if that happens and the physicality and the spirit of football, because everybody's just laying it out there. It's almost like in hockey, you know, when, there's a grudge, you fight, and then five minutes later, okay, we're good, right? It just feels like there's there's this honest mentality out there with this squad, and it, it starts at Fran and works its way down. Right. Well, and I think two reasons that is. I mean, one, it, we're at its, at its root just hearing about it more because we're hearing from more voices. Like, the more people you talk, like, we're just talking to more people, so we're hearing yes. these things more. Like, it doesn't mean that, Dino Babers' staff wasn't honest or wasn't genuine with these guys or whatever, whatever we want to say. Um, we just only ever heard from Dino. And, and, you know, also when you hear like so many of the different coaches talking about so many of the different players, that's because they all have their individual position groups that they're focusing on and stuff and can spend detailed amount of times with that a head coach can't. And so just a head coach, when that's the only mouthpiece, doesn't have all of the viewpoints of an entire staff. So I think that's part of it. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, second, just to kind of the, the pace of play and stuff like that. Um, oh, no, to the chemistry. I think we've, we sound like a broken record at this point, but like the fact that so many of these players knew each other before and have known each other since they were children and speak the same kind of like regional dialects and stuff like that, like, that just makes all of this so much easier for them. It makes it easier to be like, hey, man, you effed up that play, whatever it is, like, you need to go fix that. Then if you are all coming from different backgrounds with no connections to one, one another, like, any environment, like, if you bring in a bunch of coworkers, like, and four of the coworkers know each other, it's going to be easier for them to work together and sort out differences than if they're all from different places. So that's, those are, again, those are two really record. good points. Yeah. Those are two really good points. And this is why I advocated from hearing from the assistant coaches in the entire Babers era. Like when we talked right. to coach uh, Schaefer the other day, the, the new cornerbacks coach, and he was telling us about the star position and what's happening there. And mm -hmm. these players are in the mix. And this is what's happening in my room. 
and you hear from the different coaches, it's so refreshing to get their perspective on it, right? Not just, you know, the head spokesperson who, look, Dino can only be at one part of practice at a time. There's certain things he probably didn't know and just had to speak generally about, whereas now we're kind of getting the, the real story, if you will. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. Chris Carlson asked a good question about Kyle McCord under pressure versus Kyle McCord in the pocket, not under pressure and what the numbers say and what the difference is there. Here's what uh, Coach Campanelli said about uh, that. Well, I would say that if you studied almost every quarterback ever that way, uh, that's that's the truth. I love hearing Tom Brady, like, can't handle pressure in the middle. Like, well, get a 6'6", 290-pound guy, <laughs> have him hit in the jaw and see how that feels and throw the ball. So, like, it is something that you're always trying to create. And, you know, any type of pro-style quarterback, I think, you're always going to deal with they're going to try and you know bring pressure up the middle and try and get hits on the quarterback that type of stuff so we try to build all of our individual work on decision making and making guys uncomfortable all the time because we have other guys we got to teach to play in the pocket and you know he's got to learn how to maybe extend and do some of those things it's a great question but it's the reality is you're always trying to create an environment where they feel like they're under stress and making decisions because Dan Villari, a quarterback himself at the end of last season, and a quarterback, of course, in a previous life in football, went to Michigan as a quarterback and has made the full transition into the tight end position. So sort of a quarterback on quarterback opinion here, right, from uh, Villari <laughs> on McCord. Let's listen. And I don't know, did he do anything special to sort of won you over? I mean, he's just a great dude, you know, and, you know, I'm going to follow a great dude, you know, a good leader, and, and he's an elite quarterback, so... I mean, it wasn't hard to follow in his in his footsteps. You know, he's really smart. He's got experience, and uh, I always try and learn from him. Um, so no, it wasn't wasn't hard to follow his footsteps. What makes you? What convinced you so early that he's a great dude? Like, what what what? Uh, I think what just, about how he you know, himself? I think yeah, I think just you know how how laughable and jokeable he is. Like you know how much of a clown he is off the off the field. We just we just click right away and just just like normal dudes, you know. So that, that, that's what got me right away. What do you bust his balls about? Um, nothing. He just he just laughs at me a lot. You know, I make <laughs> him laugh because I'm a little crazy sometimes. My accent and all that stuff. So, you know, he just he loves to joke. Here. Emily, I believe you asked this question here. We've heard so much about this championship mentality that Coach Brown is trying to instill here. Here's what Valari said about it. Not that. a moment. I think just every moment we're out here, like, it's so competitive. It's so violent. Like, right right after a team period like we're sprinting to the next period like there's no breaks there's no sitting down having a drink talking to your teammate like it's is very intense and like we're going to be in really good shape so uh i think the championship mentality is just making practice way harder than the game and it's april 4th here you know think of the short turnaround time that they've had to do the off-season workouts in the weight room and now what seven official practices in the books here and how this is going to continue to be a process. And I hadn't really thought about this until Dan said it, but like last year and the year before a lot of the practices, like part of the delineation of when we were, we are excused from practice and we're, <laughs> and we're walked away um, was that the team was also taking a break and you would go see guys sit down like sit down on the sidelines and there was usually snacks passed around um water and stuff and like to hear that that's not happening anymore and that maybe they like that when that's like something you might think like oh like I'm sure they love to have a little break in practice and <laughs> and have a popsicle I don't remember what they were getting as snacks but like I was like oh yeah that was something that we always used to see or at least pretty consistently used to see and that's not the case anymore. Like we, they are working from the second we get there up until the second we leave. And then when we come back and kind of can see them through the glass before interviews, they are still working up until they get dismissed from practice. It's been interesting over the years to hear from different athletes that have said this, Emily, how the game's almost a relief, right? Practices are so intense. They're so hard. When game day comes, it's like clarity. It's just, it's here and we go. If you work that hard in practice, and it sounds like they are, from what Valaria said, what other players said, think of what Jackson Meeks said to me when I asked about, now this was about their offseason program, and he's like, would you believe me if I said it's harder up here? Like, these are honest responses that are coming from these guys per another theme 
that's surrounding this team right now. So to hear him say that about McCord too, um, everything we've seen from McCord, he's been you know, pretty polished and understands the role of the quarterback. And, you know, it was interesting, like to compare him to, to like Garrett, like Garrett Schrader last year, like, you know, Garrett was a little more laid back and, you know, I think he got comfortable more as he went, he would kind of, you he know, got cheeky joke, with us. he got cheeky at times. He <laughs> would, he would kind of break chops a little bit and maybe Kyle would do that as, as he gets a little more comfortable, but so far in, in our media dealings with Kyle, he's been, you know, to use that word again, professional, polished, kind of says all the right things, but it'll be interesting to see if some of that personality shines through a little bit. Yeah, we had hoped to talk to Kyle and the other two quarterbacks again today, but um, like we mentioned last podcast, uh, a lot of these guys ended up with 11 a.m. classes because of their majors, and so um, based on the time they get out of practice, it it hasn't uh, aligned super well for us to talk to them, but fingers crossed before again before the, the spring game, we'll get Kyle one more time, hopefully get Carlos and Braden and hear a little bit more, and we can report back to you guys then. We'll keep an eye on Syracuse.com. Emily's going to have some more stuff uh, coming from uh, practice. Already has a, a great story up today on the quarterbacks. I posted a story on Thursday as uh, some things I've overheard at uh, practice and in the media sessions that you guys should check out. Again, our Syracuse Sports Insider, send us your questions. What do you want Emily and I to look out for at practice? What do you want us to ask the players and the coaches coming up here? What are some things you'd like us to talk about on the podcast? Send me a text. Text the word orange to 315-847-3895. That starts the process for you. It's very simple, very easy to sign up to become a Syracuse Sports Insider. Try it free for two weeks and then just $3.99 a month after that. We look forward to hearing more of your great questions and comments and the things you want us to discuss here on Syracuse Sports and what we want to look out for and write about for Syracuse football going forward. In the meantime, Emily, thank you very much. Enjoy the weekend. I will. We will talk to you again soon, friends, here on Syracuse Sports, presented by Krause Health, the exclusive healthcare partner for SU Athletics.